Welcome back, everybody, to the next session. We have seen um, about uh, problems how to get uh, girls from school to the university. But then, you know, the leak is at every stage, and also it is problematic to get enough women from the studies further to stay for making a PhD at the university. And so the reasons for losing uh, females at different stages from our career path uh, have common aspects for the different career stages, but there are also special aspects in it. And in this session, we would like to highlight uh, some experiences in research and uh, activities in these areas. And I am very happy to have our first speaker, Miga, um, to, um, ex to report on his experience in an activity related to software engineering and the role of girls in this area. Thank you. So, hello everybody. Uh, so, my name is Miguel Goló and I come from the Universidade Nova de Lisboa. Uh, and uh, the, the subject of this talk is uh, uh, on uh, how uh, different problem solving styles may affect uh, gender inclusion in computer science courses. And this is joint work done with Catalina Greile and a uh, master student that we had, uh, Catalina Match. I'm sorry, uh, the, um, the PowerPoint did mess a bit the, um, the style, but I hope it's okay. So uh, the first insight that uh, we need to think about is that uh, people have different ways of solving problems. And uh, that affects the way that they use the same software. So different people will help have different strategies of using the same software. And this is something, something that we have observed in the past. And the individual characteristics on uh, how people solve problems actually tend to uh, cluster by gender. And this also uh, is problematic because most software is designed uh, uh, by males. So naturally, uh, when we design software, we tend to use uh, the approaches that will work better for us. And because we don't have uh, enough women uh, designing software, this becomes problematic because this supports the problem-solving styles that men prefer. So uh, there's this, uh, this uh, approach called gender mag uh, that uh, was uh, de designed uh, by uh, a team in the US uh, that uh, has identified several um, facets of how we solve problems. So, for instance, uh, we, we think about what motivates people to use software. Uh, so why would you use a new tech? Uh, what is the, the favorite information processing style that uh, one uses when, uh, when dealing with tech? Uh, how how self-confident are you in your computing te tech? Uh, uh, sorry, this is moving on its own. Uh, how confident are you on your uh, ability to use the new technologies? Uh, what is your attitude towards risk? Do you tend to explore an application and try out the different things, even if you don't really need them or not? Uh, what are the ways that you prefer to, to, to use when uh, learning a new technology? How do you interact with it? And uh, this team from Oregon State uh, created uh, three personas. The first one is Abigail. Uh, our point is, <laughs> sorry. Uh, and Abigail basically uses software to perform tasks why is this moving? Uh, the information processing style that she uses is uh, usually comprehensive. Uh, her computer self-efficacy is low, so she has low self-confidence on, on her abilities. The attitude towards risk is that she's risk-averse, so she uses only the basics of the software. And um, she is very process-oriented. Uh, in the way she uses tech. Now, Tim, or Timothy, uh, is motivated to use software because he has fun with it. Uh, his information processing style is very selective. Uh, his computer self-efficacy 
is high, so it's a, uh, he has a very high confidence. His attitude towards risk is risk tolerant, and he loves tinkering with the software, so he likes to play around. Finally, in between Abby and Tim, we have Patricia, that is more or less in between these uh, two characters. And maybe you have noticed that uh, in these pictures, we usually have some pictures of men and women, because although these uh, features are more, uh, in the case of Tim, more uh, common in men, and in the case of Abby, more common in women, this is not always the case. So, for instance, uh, if we think about motivation to explore new technology, we see that most males there in blue uh, tend to be like Tim, so about 68% and only 10% tend to be like Abby, but there are still some males who behave like Abby in this respect. And uh, this is true for any of those characteristics. So, uh, basically, w what we are trying to understand, and this is just moving on its own, sorry. Um, what we are trying to understand is, first, is that are women who enroll in computer science different than other women in general, with respect to these uh, uh, problem-solving styles? And we found out that, yes, uh, they are uh, significantly more motivated than colleagues from other STEM courses, STEM courses, sorry, uh, to, uh, to use technology. Uh, they are also more adept of tinkering than colleagues from uh, other STEM um, courses. And with respect to these three other uh, characteristics, they are basically the same. Uh, so, if we, we enlarge this student, so these first uh, slides that I was showing you were about uh, young students, so the ones that enroll in the first year. But if we generalize this to the five years of the courses, then the, the differences are somewhat mitigated, but still uh, they are more motivated to use tech, and still they have a more tinkering uh, style in, uh, in playing with software. Uh, so the next question that we, we, we asked was, to what extent are these problem-solving characteristics uh, related to performance? And in this uh, slide, we see that uh, if we have, uh, this is uh, taken from a programming course, and groups with all women, all men, or mixed are, have pretty much the same performance. But uh, if we go to the final grades of the course, then uh, men in general have a slightly better uh, performance. This does not mean that women are doomed. This actually has more to do with liking to tinker uh, with the software or not. Uh, so people who prefer to tinker, regardless of their gender, uh, tend to perform better. But again, this is not a curse, because some of the Abbeys, as you might see on the left-hand side, uh, are among the best performers. So you can be an Abbey and be still very good at this. Uh, it only happens that, apparently, uh, our courses are better designed for teams than for Abbeys. So the next question that we asked uh, ourselves was, was, to what extent did professors' um, problem-solving styles met, match those of students? So we had a survey with 129 computer science students and 16 uh, computer science professors. And what we found was that students, in general, are more motivated than professors to use new technologies, uh, maybe and just maybe because I have to look this, uh, we need more detail for this. Maybe this is a generation thing too, not just gender. Um, students also like to tinker more with uh, the software applications than uh, professors do, clearly. Um, and on the other hand, professors have a, high, a higher self-efficacy, so we trust more on uh, our ability to do things right. With, with the software that we use. And we have a more selective uh, information processing style. Again, this might be a question of maturity as well, uh, not just uh, gender. By the way, uh, in this scale that you have seen in all these, uh, these graphs, uh, Tim is represented with nine, Abby with one. This is just two ends of, the, of a spectrum, okay? 
it doesn't mean that being Abby or being Tim is better or worse. It's just a, a representation thing, okay? Uh, because as you, have seen, as, you, as you have seen, the best student that we had in that programming course was actually in Abby. Uh, so, concerning the attitudes towards risk, we are similar to our students in general. Um, and closing to the end. So the next question that we asked was, are we shaping our students to be like us? And um, to, to, do, to, to answer this question, uh, we picked that survey with the 16 uh, professors, and uh, we found that professors who have a lower self-efficacy, they tend to favor offline materials like books, uh, and autonomous search by students when assigning projects to to them and asking them to, to learn about the new subject. Um, with respect to learning style, professors who favor a process-oriented learning style rather than uh, prefer to tinker with the, the software, uh, they favor solving problems in, in, in classes with the participation of students. So uh, they will ask for students to help uh, them uh, on the next step of the problem and do this systematically. Uh, and this is more frequent in process-oriented professors. Uh, and with respect to inf information processing style, uh, people, people who have a more comprehensive information processing style favor more in the evaluation, comprehension, and application uh, questions than uh, others. Okay, and finally, uh, sorry, this slide is buggy. Okay, sorry. Uh, all this uh, data that I've been showing you uh, was collected uh, in the context of a master thesis by Katerina Match, uh, and we have a clear notion that we have only scratches the surface. There's a lot more to learn about this, uh, so we have enrolled a few more students to help us out in this process. And uh, the challenge that I would like to to live to, to this community, which I'm joining today for the first time, is that maybe we can leverage this notion of uh, different problem-solving styles and make our uh, teaching practices more inclusive so that uh, we make it more appealing to uh, the abbeys in the world, okay? And that's it. Sorry about the problems in the PowerPoint. I hope you got. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, are there any questions in the audience or online? Yes, please. Um. <laughs> Thank you for your presentation. Uh, so sorry if I missed it. But I have a question about self-efficiency about computer. Uh, it's perceived self-efficiency or you measure it? Perceived self-efficiency. Perceived. perceived. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All of this is perceived. So basically, we used a, a standard questionnaire that Margaret, Margaret Barnett, the inventor of this gender mag approach, provided us. He was generous to provide it. And so we have, by now, a few hundred uh, questionnaires done to professors, students, uh, professionals, uh, and we are just starting to explore the data. But it's all uh, perception. You had a question? Thank you, Miguel. Um, my question is also more of a clarification, um, and it's about the thinkering. Yes. I, I know what thinkering is. But I'm not sure what I think thinkering is, is the same that you considered for your study. Okay. So could you please clarify what you meant by that? Okay, so, uh, excellent question. So, uh, when, when we are, uh, say, developing software, um, the idea of tinkering is that we will try things just to see what happens, okay? Uh, and uh, it turns out that 
the teams in the world. Uh, and I don't know if you noticed, but uh, there are like 30 something percent or 40 percent of Abbeys in computer science who are tinkerers as well. Uh, we are not afraid of trying it and to, to see what happens. So, uh, particularly in programming, uh, there's this notion that uh, I teach uh, computer science students of the first year, first course of programming, and also in other STEM. And particularly in other STEM, they are afraid to try things because they are afraid that the computer might explode or something. Okay? Uh, and uh, we have to cross that barrier so that they are not afraid of failing and trying again, because you learn a lot from when you do mistakes. Uh, and apparently, and this is my perception even for my teaching, we seem to favor uh, approaches where people will actually be encouraged to try and fail, try and fail, try and fail. So this is encourage, encouraging tinkerers uh, to some extent, uh, as opposed to encouraging people will go and read a book about programming, really understand it, and then try it. We have also fantastic students who prefer this approach. Uh, so the thing is that maybe we are disencouraging those who would prefer this by pushing them to, don't worry, try, it will fail. Not a problem. Uh, I'm not sure what the, the, the good way of going is. Uh, what I, I, I have been observing uh, through the data is that tinkerers in general tend to uh, have a better Time. So if you want to discuss further tomorrow, we will have an origin uh, working day and we are in working group two. So if you would like to continue discussion, then you Plenty have of opportunities for collabor collaboration. We have new students picking up on this. Unfortunately, okay. we, we have to move on, but you see there is, um, there is a strong need for further discussions on these aspects. Um, thank you. And also, we have already seen uh, that questionnaires are an important tool to find out what is behind, because still we do not fully understand what are the reasons and why, despite so many activities and so intensive efforts, we do not manage to increase the numbers. And Larissa is our next uh, speaker. Yes. Uh, who did also a very nice um, effort in this direction and um, collected also some facts, uh, what uh, moves, what motivates girls to uh, pursue um, computer science careers. <laughs> Please. Thank you. Um, how can I switch between slides? <laughs> Ah, okay, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, yes, so hello and welcome to my talk. Um, as, I, as was already said, um, my colleagues and I conducted a study um, about problems um, researchers in Germany have and how they solve them. Um, so we are from three different groups and normally conducting research um, related to software engineering and software architecture. And within our group, we already have different cultural backgrounds and we are at different stages of life, meaning that some of us are older, some of us are younger, some of us already have kids. Um, but what we all share is that we are women in computer science and thus a minority. So one day... Oh. Um, yeah, <laughs> no, so one day in a meeting, um, we just came across problems that we had and um, talked about that, and then we wondered whether that is something all women in computer science have, or what are the most common problems of women in computer science research, and wanted to know more about that. But also, we were interested in solutions women already found for that problems, um, to maybe learn from them, or to be able to give some advice for certain problem solution strategies. So we decided to conduct a survey about that, asking women about that, and we decided to restrict ourselves to technical universities 
um, because we were mostly interested in computer science participants um, and in Germany to somehow scope the sc study. And we decided to ask people who identified themselves as women. And then we split up the answers into two groups, one the computer scientists and the counter group, the not computer scientists, which are also mostly in STEM research. Um, yeah. To find out more specifically about their problems, we first came up with four main problem areas where we thought problems could be located in, which are the cultural, personal, and the workplace dimension, and the research, where we distinguish between problems at the workplace in general and problems related to research um, specifically, and also in others category to account for problem areas that we didn't think of and to give participants the yeah, possibility to state some other problems. And more specifically, we then asked about some subtopics in each problem area, which are for the cultural and the religion, clothing, problems related to name changing, and also problems related to cultural infrastructure, for example, prayer rooms that are only for men. Regarding personal dimension, we asked about problems related to hormones and period, the life plan, um, responsibilities when women have, for example, more responsibilities, for example, regarding elder care and pregnancy. For problems at the workplace, we considered equality issues, support regarding equality, um, collaboration issues with men, and also the workplace infrastructure, for example, um, that there are no toilets for women. For research, we asked about the idea sharing, um, problems with appreciation of the research of women, problems related to publications, for example, when it comes to the author sequence, that the prioritization is in favor of men, and also priority um, of women. So we then asked every question the same. We first introduced the problem area we're talking about at the moment, um, and then asked whether the participant experienced a problem related to the topic, and if she crossed yes, then she could give us a detailed description, optional, and also indicate whether she solved that problem. And if so, she could also give a description of the solution. Um, we made the survey then available for two weeks online and received in total 220 surveys, um, from which 132 were fully answered and from women who did or currently do research in Germany. Um, and there we had 52 computer scientists and 80 not computer scientists. So before I come to our evaluation, let me concretize our research questions. So as I said, we were mostly interested in what problems women face in research. And there we were interested in the three dimensions. First, in which area are the most problems located? And then which topic, so which specific subtopic has the most problems? And lastly, what are the actual problems participants described related to a topic? And analogously for the solutions. So coming to the results, first we see an overview of the problems and the solutions per area, where we can see that most problems are located in the personal area, closely followed by work, and then research and cultural issues. Um, where we can also see that problems are colored in red, that um, work problems seem to be way more common for computer scientists with 30.9% related to 24.9% of non-computer scientists. And speaking about solutions, we can also see that most of the problems are not solved. Only about a third of problems were solved by the computer scientists and 24% by the non-computer scientists. If we now look at the topics, um, we can see that life plan issues are the most common problem. So for example, to decide when to have kids. Um, and then followed by equality and the responsibilities topic for computer scientists. Um, yeah. While we can see that for some topics, solutions seem to exist, which are colored in green, for example, the life plan, was solved for 4% of the problems and 4.9% um, by the respective groups. For some issues, there don't really seem to exist solutions. For example, regarding support, 
or appreciation, where it would be certainly interesting to look further into why there are no solutions to that. So now to the third sub-question, what are the actual problems that were described? To gain insight about that, we actually read the answers and labeled them and came up with 37 labels from which the most the label we assigned most was the parenting label. So again, a person, personal issue and also family planning. So for example, one participant wrote that as a single mother, her colleagues expected her um, to organize her way, her child, and even considered the time with her child to be like their hobbies. Um, and another woman wrote that family planning is very complicated because there's so little job security. Um, on the third place, then male communication followed, um, closely followed by undermining. So to explain, we gave the male communication label when there were problems in communication and co collaboration with men, but it didn't seem if, um, so that men were performing intentionally against women. It was more their style of communication or some comments they made that weren't good, um, as opposed to undermining, where men intentionally performed against women. Um, and then promotion refers to problems um, related to the career because of, um, for example, parental leave. So, for example, one participant wrote, whereas men are supported and invited, for example, to publish with the boss and getting great recommendation letters, my female colleagues and I are doing the groundwork, teaching, for example. Now um, to speak about solutions, um, as I said, um, about a third of problems were described or were indicated as solved. However, um, we sorted out some solutions um, from the labeling process that didn't really were a solution. For example, one participant wrote that she continued to go to work um, with migraine and just take more painkillers. Um, <laughs> So we didn't consider that a solution and thus didn't include it in the solution labeling process here. So the most commonly um, described solution was to accept help by others and also later on help others. For example, one participant wrote that meeting and exchanging with other women and also building networks of women really helped her. And then even after a solution we consider as good um, follows the workaround um, which is mostly more time-consuming and thus not really a good solution. For example, one participant wrote related to the name-changing problem that she just established a constant communication about who she is, um, being the person that run under a different name before. And on the third place, we then have to strengthen the self-esteem, which um, also refers to adapting your behavior or communication. Um, as, for example, one woman wrote that she adapted uh, her communication to be more straightforward and to communicate her needs more directly. Yeah. So shortly regarding threats to validity, um, regarding the internal validity of our study, the areas and topics were not fully disjoint, and also the association of a problem to a certain topic or area depends on every person, so that could change a little bit. Regarding external validity, we only contacted technical universities, so our non-computer scientist group may not be comparable to other non-computer scientist groups, and also we had different group sizes. Regarding reproducibility, the problem and solution labeling process um, would be a concern. So, to sum up, um, we conducted a survey to collect problems and solutions of women in research in Germany and found out that between the groups, um, the distribution of problems across the areas are similar. However, a computer scientist group was able to solve 34% of their problems, whereas the non-computer scientist group was able to solve only 23%. And the computer scientist group reported more equality issues. Um, the most described problems were parenting and family plans, and the most frequently described solutions to that were to accept help from others, to find a workaround, and to strengthen the self-esteem. Thank you. Thank you so much for the really interesting talk. 
It is a pity that we actually have now already uh, over, but if there is any question for fast, then we could handle perhaps one or two. Yes, Ivica. Thank you. Uh, have you seen this group of non-computer uh, science students? They were from uh, which area? Different or some specific from biology or from physics or...? Uh... Yeah, they were actually from different areas, though most of them are in the STEM area. So we only had, I think, five participants that were not in s located in STEM areas. Yeah. But all... Perhaps an online question? Yes, there's one question from Andri Yanou. And she asked if there are also data from Cyprus, because she's really interested in the data, as there is no reference at this point for her. Ah, yeah, sorry. Yes, actually, um, we also published a study at this year's European Conference on Software Architecture. And um, we also have a Git repository containing all our survey data, which is also linked in the paper. And the paper has the same title as the talk. Super, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. I hope also that we can have your slides also from the previous talk uh, to share, mm -hmm. uh, such that uh, you can also have the data from the slides. <coughs> so unfortunately, uh, I think we need to go for the coffee break now. But also here, also Larissa, we participate tomorrow mm -hmm. in our uh, group meeting. Yes, uh, next session comes immediately, not the coffee break, exactly. So Larissa will be also with us today. Thank you once more for your talk. So I hope to see you tomorrow in the WVG2 meeting uh, to discuss, and I pass over to the next part.